Hi, everybody. This is Julian from Hugging Face. Uh, welcome to this podcast episode. Uh, and I'm super happy to have my friend Mark uh, all the way from the US somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, great to have you. And uh, I'll give Mark a chance to introduce himself. Uh, and then we'll go into uh, um, hopefully an interesting discussion on small language models and uh, what uh, Mark's company has been up to. And I guess we'll dive into interesting things like model merging and whatnot. So let's see where this goes. I don't know. I, I don't have a plan. We don't need a plan. So, Mark, very happy to have you. Um, would you please introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about uh, RC, the company you started? Yeah, um, great to be on, Julian. Great to see you again. Uh, Mark McQuaid, been in, uh, you know, uh, I've known you since Hugging Face, right? So I was I was uh, early hired at Hugging Face, I guess early enough, right? Um, early enough. I was at Hugging Face. Yeah, early enough. Let's say early hire. Um, and uh, you know, learned a lot, learned a ton in my time at Hugging Face, and 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 probably uh, used a lot of those learnings to start RC, which is a company that I started about a year ago, um, where we you know we set out on a mission to enable organizations to better customize and, and utilize LLMs, right? So um, that was kind of the original mission statement, which has brought us to, to where we are now, which is yep. a heavy focus on SLMs, a heavy focus on model merging and merge kit. Um, so. Yeah, it's been it's been quite the quite the year. I'm excited to be on, and uh, it's good to good to catch up with you again for sure. Yeah, sure. Um, and well, I let's double click on everything, you know, triple click on everything you said. Um, so, so I guess the, the the a good way a good place to start would be small language models, right? Um, mm -hmm. So I guess by now everyone's familiar with uh, transformer models and and large language models. Uh, which are really amazing for uh, a variety of uh, of use cases, uh, you know, conversational apps and again, generative AI, et cetera, et cetera. But tell me a little bit about small language models. Uh, so what is a small language model? How does that compare to a large language model? And, and what's the benefit of working with SLMs compared to their bigger brothers? Yeah, I mean, small language models. I mean, the word "small" is subjective, I guess, right? Yeah. It's you know, what does "small" mean? Um, but you know, we look at it uh, at RC small language models being, you know, under seventy billion, you know, sub seventy billion, and even seventy billion is pretty big. You know, in the in the range of seven to thirteen is probably okay. the sweet spot, right? Yes. Uh, billion parameters. Um, but you know, obviously, when when you have models like Llama 3, 70 billion come out that are just that powerful, maybe you have to flex up slightly to say, you know, maybe maybe small small can be, you know, 70 under. But I mean, the, the power of the small language model is the ability to customize and ground them um, for your use case and your task, right? Um, and, you know, we believe firmly, and I, I think a lot of people at Hugging Face believe this as well, is that the world of the future is a world of millions of smaller specialized models, not one model to rule them all. Yeah, right? no so, silver bullet, yes? Yeah, no silver bullet, right? Okay. So um, we actually envision, you know, if you have a company, a large, they have Fortune 50 company, right? Um, they're not just hitting, you know, Claude or, or GPT, you know, aggressively uh, for everything. They actually have hundreds, if not thousands of, of SLMs humming from within uh, really task and use case focused, right? So maybe they have one that specializes on financial risk analysis and another one for customer support, right? Whatever the use case is. But, um, and the, the, the reason you can have, you know, the amount of those models and you can, you can spread out your ROI, right? Is because they're smaller, they're more efficient, they're easier to handle, they're less expensive, less complex. Um, yes. And there's a lot of benefits to it. I, I actually think that, you know, about 99% of business use cases can be solved with a smaller specialized model over a large model. Have you been reading my slides? No. <laughs> <laughs> you see my friends, of all of you, yeah. all of you listening, it's not just me, you know, there's another one. He's on the other side of the Atlantic, but mm -hmm. you know, that that's two of us at least, <laughs> uh, you know, thinking that 99% uh, of, uh, of use cases are actually um, a great uh, um, uh, a great way to to apply small language models, and you know, I spend most of my time meeting with enterprise customers too, and I hear the same. Um, uh, uh, most most customers these these days start from um, open source models, but on, not only that, they start from 
uh, small models because they understand, as you said, small is fast, small is uh, cheaper, uh, small is more scalable. And um, and that's kind of the first thing they want to look at before they even look at the, you know, the big, uh, you know, black box, closed source, whatever you want to call them, uh, models, right? So, yeah, uh, totally agree. I think that's a, that's a good place to be. And just, just um, coming to customization, would you say or do you see evidence that a small model is easier to customize because generally it knows less um is it easier to uh, um focus on a on a narrow enterprise use case where you know you want really uh, an inch wide and you know a mile deep so to speak yeah exactly i mean we this uh, we we've seen that the smaller language models can have more of a focal point right more focus right yes. and um you can you can easier it's easier to inject your domain knowledge into those models um and then they have more you know focus on that domain now mind you even even you know what, what was llama 3 8 billion 15 trillion tokens so uh, yeah. you know the tokens are still like they still that's the i think that's the beauty of these slms is that they also have strong capabilities in general reasoning, right? And you know, it's because because of those trillion tokens, right? Like Chinchilla scaling law went out the window probably with Llama two when they trained, you know, seven billion parameter model on one trillion tokens or whatever it was, right? Mm -hmm. When they used to call, you know, they used to call for fifty billion parameters is a three billion parameter model and a hundred is seven billion, right? That that went out the window long ago. So I think. Yeah. Although you can you can ground them and focus them on your domain data much easier, um, they also still have that power by being trained on you know trillions and trillions of tokens for general. Yeah, general they still have right? they have abilities for sure. Yeah, they're not yeah. toy models. I think that's the uh, mm. that's again the, the 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 lesson that a lot of customers have uh, have learned for by themselves. You know, you can get a, a lot done with those high quality eight, seven, six, and even smaller. You know, uh, I keep coming to the to the Microsoft Phi, you know, Phi two, Phi three models, Phi three. and uh, and you know, no one ever accused me of being a, a, a Microsoft fan. You know, that's <laughs> just who I am. But uh, I'll give it to them. You know, those are really really interesting models as well, and uh, I see I see them being used in in very clever ways. So. Okay, now let's tell us a little bit about RC, um, uh, the platform you are building, and um, and how it helps customers um, work with small language models and customize them. So, you know, why would anyone care? Why why should people take a look at RC's platform? Yeah, so we we built a platform that. Um, so right now, right now, our platform is solely built to run inside a customer's VPC, right? So, okay. um, you know, the benefits of that, and you know, the, the companies that we spoke to, it really resonates with is the kind of you know enterprise, you know, kind of ultra enterprise where their data is never allowed to leave their environment. So they have the ability to deploy our stack from within their environment, and our stack consists of. You know the ability to do continual pre-training, right? Like full fine-tuning right. uh, of a model, as well as supervised fine-tuning, um, as well as model merging. Now, model merging is is our core, right? Like we, yes. you know, we have Merge Kit as a library. We're, we're all about model merging, but we understand that the power of merging is also in the ability to do some form of customization of the model. You know, yeah. you know fine-tuning, you know, pre-training, whatever it may be. So, um, yeah, I mean, that's our platform allows you to do that customization through training and then do model merging, uh, which allows you to inject uh, knowledge from another great model, another great checkpoint that exists out there, and then into your model, and now you have one great model, right? So um, that's at present, at present in VPC deploy, but we're actually expanding and, and, and going into our cloud offering soon. So, um, yeah, I mean, we, we think we, we absolutely differentiate with the model merging piece. Yeah, and and you know, fine tuning and and generally model customization so far has been, even though it's become way simpler and uh, and, and I would say way more standard. Um, you know, I keep telling customers, hey, uh, your fine tuning effort is probably just taking one of the scripts in the transformers repository and applying your good data to that. And that's exactly. where the effort lies, actually, you know, building the data set, not so much the code. So the fine-tuning process is, I hate to say commoditized, but I think it's getting there. And it's it's also cheap, right? You know, LoRa and QLoRa 
and parameter efficient fine tuning and, and and all that good stuff is is valuable and that's kind of the starting point but i think w- what i'm trying to say is we can always make it simpler right uh we can make it uh you know just a few clicks or we can make it drag and drop or we can fully commoditize it uh in terms of uh in terms of uh um, zero code and 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 just having something simple so is that where you're going yeah i mean so this is it's just funny i was talking about this today that um yes so so the power in what we do is we're we're providing the ability for people to easily uh customize train models and merge models through an easy to use ui okay so um you know a few clicks you know you go in you don't have to be a machine learning engineer um you don't have to be even you know that much of an engineer to be honest um to use what we're providing right um yeah. which is kind of unique right so if you look at the other platforms that exist today many of them you know you you log into their platform they send you to a, you know an api that a, a sdk yeah, right yeah. um so and don't get me wrong we are going to have a strong focus on an sdk because you need to have yeah. code for developers right like for developers and automation want to and yeah and plus. everything right so uh, we will have that, but we will have, you know, a core UI that allows you to easily, you know, upload a data set and, you know, from S3 as an example, point mm-hmm. it to your model and you click, right? You click a button and it runs under the hood, you know, uh, you know, your, your pre-training um, uh, routines. Yep. Um, and then your model's done and then you move on to the merging piece and then you finally move on to DPO where it kind of polishes the entire thing up with a with a DPO run. Um, but all, all via, you know, UI clickable, right? So yes, um, simple. Something unique. It's something unique so that you wouldn't think would be unique, right? That that UI yeah. interface it actually doesn't exist really that much. Like everyone, I can name. I won't. I won't get a name. So I can name five platforms that offer some kind of fine tuning, but it's all through API and SDK. Right. Yeah, and yeah. you can't beat one click, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and every time I say one click, people look at me like, "Oh, come on!" You know, you. It's the evangelist again. But I, you know, I I showed to them. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. When I say one click, it's not a figure of speech. It is one click. You know, you can do this. It's one click. Uh, okay, maybe it's two, but you know, it's not more. Than well, that. I mean, it's a, if you if you can, as you said, right? If you can go into Hugging Face, which has all the scripts, yeah. who's to say you, you someone just doesn't package all those scripts uh, under an API and then allows you to interact with them via one two clicks, right? I mean, it's absolutely possible. People absolutely, just don't yeah. kind of envision yeah. the the ability to do it, right? Yeah, exactly. So let's let's move on. So you mentioned model merging. Okay, I guess most most folks will be familiar with you know fine tuning and and, and uh, uh, you know it's it, it's it's almost a legacy thing now. <laughs> you know, it's a traditional yeah. thing to do fine tuning. Model merging is still um, is a weirder uh, is a weirder beast, right? Yeah. And, um, and tell us so tell us a little bit about uh, merge kit. Uh, and uh, and and the I mean the relationship between RC and Merge Kit, and and generally where does model merging fit? You know, in the in the toolbox of uh, um, I would say engineers and and practitioners, where does model merging stand? Um, and and how would you recommend folks get started with it? Yeah, so we you know. Model merging itself is a novel technique, right? To fuse multiple models together, um, it's kind of like black magic, right? In the way yeah, that is. the ma- you know the matrices get multiplied and you know fused together from multiple models. You know when you want to get in, when you want to get into the depth on that on the math side of it, you can have Charles on, who uh, is the creator of Merge Kit. And, <laughs> yeah, you know, I should he, have that. I should, <laughs> have, spent, I should have him on, on to, just to, to understand the math behind it. Yeah. yeah. He spent many years at NASA working on jet propulsion software. So, oh, um, yeah, he's he's your guy for that. I won't get into crazy. On no, that, no, but... let's not get into the math. <laughs> yeah, um, but I mean, and and so as I, you know, kind of leading to that, yeah, Charles Charles Goddard is the creator of Merge Kit. Um, he essentially created Merge Kit uh, in his spare time. He found he thought there was a better way to. He saw all of these checkpoints, right? All these yeah, open source yeah. checkpoints that sit on the hub, right? They all just sit on the hub. How can you start utilizing those checkpoints? For yourself right as opposed to just letting them sit there right mm-hmm. so we created merge kit which is a library to easily merge multiple models into one um you know it started to blow up um you know i still have very strong ties with hugging face and people within you know monitoring what's happening and you started to see all these merged models popping up on the hugging face yeah. leaderboard yeah. um so you know i built a relationship with charles and and i you know 
uh, brought him on to RC and, and he brought Merge Kit with him. So Merge Kit now belongs to RC and, um, you know, Charles is, is leading all his efforts from here and we've given him an entire team to, to do everything he needs to do on that side. But um, the way we see it, we see model merging as the absolute next frontier of transfer learning, right? In that mm -hmm. you have, you know, thousands upon thousands of open source checkpoints out there um, and let's start utilizing, utilizing them, bringing them together, right? So what we see is, as I, I kind of touched upon earlier, is the true power is, you know, training a model and then mm -hmm. using merge kit, right? So it's, so say you train a model on your own domain data, the financial data, right? And that model, you know, depending on, on how you train, probably gets degraded, right? Even with Laura, it's going to get degraded a little bit. Yes. Uh, yes. But if you do deep fine tuning, it's going to catastrophically forget a little more. Mm -hmm. um, so in the world, what happens today is people say to you, well, just add, you know, another 1 billion general tokens to kind of make up for that catastrophic forgetting, right? Yeah. Um, and we say, yeah, it's kind of stupid, right? It's kind of counterintuitive. It's already been trained on 10 trillion, 15 trillion tokens. Mm -hmm. So um, just do a merge, right? So when you do a merge, it actually is a healing mechanism for that model, right? So you heal everything it forgot because you're bringing another model in that is you yeah. know, potentially great at something, general reasoning. Um, and then it's a boosting mechanism, right? So this yeah. other model could be great at general reasoning and legal. Yeah, you're going to bring it into your model that was trained on financial data. And now it's going to have the best of three yeah. worlds, essentially. Yeah, right? or so, math and engineering yeah. or and whatever. It, yeah, okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think it's uh, I think it's a really, you know, the, the, yeah, again, I would love to to dive deeper into the theory. I, actually, I, I did a an intro level video on model merging a while back and uh you know it's it's kind of popular you know so <laughs> it's a good, yeah. it's good news right good news for merch kit i guess um and so go go check that out if you're curious about some of those uh some of those methods and uh i know the, the research papers um are also pretty interesting in terms of uh showing you you know actual examples of hey let's merge you know math and code or let's merge um this computer vision data set with that computer vision data set you know uh so we can do uh street scenes and dogs and cats and uh zero training involved so i think yeah i think it's a great uh it's it it could be the missing link right as you said we have hundreds of thousands of fine tuned models uh, so that compute has already been spent that work has that money has been spent that time yeah. has been spent the models are there we just need the abilities right uh, we want the good stuff in there. And what I also like about model merging is um, most of the of the techniques let you actually, um, uh, you know, put weights on, um, on you know, model A plus model B plus model C. So it's not just exactly. equal parts. It could be, you know, give me 10% of the math model and give me 30% of the code model and give me, you know, uh, whatever. And, and so you can... I feel, you know, intuitively uh, that um, it, it's a way to control, you know, the the, uh, the 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 forgetness problem. It's a way to control, um, you know, how much of that domain you want to inject into the baseline. And you know, you can easily experiment because it takes seconds, right? Uh, the merging process is is just seconds. So you, you can yeah. actually, you know, you can actually experiment a lot. And those become like those weights become new hyperparameters in a way, and you can experiment a lot and find the the recipe literally that that delivers the best evaluation score. Yeah, and I think that you hit it. Like first off, merging is done on CPU, so yep. it's efficient. Um, you can play with it. It's kind of addicting, right? You see people just merge <laughs> like four or five models. They try to game the Hugging Face leaderboard, really, right? I think yeah, yeah, yeah. They that, are. <laughs> that's why. That's why I think the power really is in training a model as well as merging. It's not just merging, um, but. Yeah, you could you could literally it's called it's you know the 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 parameters you can set from within your merge and config file are almost infinite uh, with the the weight the density the amount of model to bring over here to this model that's why you know our what we released recently is even more powerful is evolutionary model merging which is you're removing the human guessing out of it and you're yeah. allowing the model to decide right the best possible merge that you could do yes. so. Um, you you define the evals. So you say, okay, I have five evals I need to best optimize for. Now go figure it out. And what it does is evolutionary model merging. It takes an evolutionary algorithm and it does a uh, merge eval, merge eval, merge eval over and over and over. 
uh, until it spits out this insanely complex config file and it says this is your best possible yeah. if, if, you know, merge that you could do. Um, so so maybe massive... maybe AutoML works after all, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> the only, the only after all these years, that, after all these years, it's finally starting to pay off. Um, yeah. But the only the only thing that is within evolutionary model merging, it requires GPUs, right? So that's something we're providing in our in our product that we're releasing. Um, but you know, because you need it does the eval merge over and over and over and over, right? You need to have you know a cluster of GPUs. Um, so it's a little bit more expensive, yeah. but sure. It sure. produces a much greater model. All right. We said we wouldn't dive, you know, into the tech, but I have to ask, you know, um, uh, so a couple of more recent additions to, to Merch Kit. The first one is a uh, mixture of experts. So, you know, without going too crazy, you know, how how do you combine uh, MOE and model merging and, and, and what's the point? Yeah, I mean, it's great. Thing. I mean, I think the two... Two of the hottest space things in LLM right now is MOEs and model merging, right? So uh, how do you kind of compare them? So first off, MOEs are mergeable, right? So you can merge uh, MOEs. The the struggle with the community merging MOEs is there just isn't a ton of MOEs that have been trained, right? I mean, mm -hmm. training an MOE is very hard, right? Yes. Um, so, you know, people in the community who want to just grab two models and they want to fuse them together it's hard to do that because there is limited amount of MOEs that have been trained. Sure. Um, so once we start figuring that out, I think it opens it a lot up. And that's something we're actually working on as well. We have our research team working on, um, you know, the efficient training of MOEs. Think of like expanding an MOE by adding an expert, right? Um, which obviously, you know, you don't have to train over the entire model. You're adding an expert, which is, you know, say 7 billion parameters. And then you're, now training only that expert adding it into like say mixtural seven by eight um and then you now have an moe that has been trained very efficiently and still has that huge power of like a mixtural right okay. um and then you have the ability to potentially now take that model and then merge it with another model that exists that is great at something else right so um it's less about the complexity in merging moes it's more about the complexity in training moes which is why it's difficult to see them kind of joined together Okay, yeah, that should be interesting because yeah. MOE has been a uh, you know pretty uh, uh, pretty a large you know step forward in terms of model accuracy. So yeah, model merging and and MOE that that's exciting. And the second yeah. thing, which which is crazy and blows my mind every time I I, I read or try it, is uh, you know pass through merging. So the the so called Franken merging, um, which is completely crazy, where you literally chop bits and pieces from different models and stitch them again together. So, so tell us, tell me about that. I mean, what, what does that look like? And, uh, and is it something that you would actually recommend to customers? <laughs> so I think uh, Charles says it best. Franken merge is good to play with, but he doesn't recommend it for any production. Okay. Scale work. Thank uh, you. Yeah, he does not. Now he may change that as he keeps working on it, but right now he does. Yeah. Not well, he's, I'm sure he'll make yeah. it great, but yeah. Yeah. For now, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, and I mean that right, that's the ability to kind of merge in different models, different pieces of different models all together, right? Um, like I guess in true Frankenstein uh, fashion, right? Like you know, it's arms, legs, head, whatever. Um, and so then you're you are bringing in you know a bit of greatness from all these open source checkpoints into all uh, you know into one model. Um, but yeah, it's it's still being ironed out, and exactly the best way to do that that then can scale the production. Now, what's more interesting is using the pass through method straight on a on a on a smaller model so uh, this is the world that we are we are heavily investing in right now on our research mm -hmm. team as well take llama 38 billion okay yeah now use the pass through method extend it to 11 billion parameters okay mm -hmm. you've now okay. extended it 3 billion parameters you're going to now freeze the entire original 8 you know very lora esque right like peft esque um you're going to freeze the entire 8 and you're only going to do a full fine tune, so a better fine tune on the three billion parameters that you've added. Obviously, the cost is much more efficient and effective. Then you're going to do a you know a, a DPO or maybe you know mm -hmm. maybe it's an ORPO or something over the entire model to you know, polish it. Um, but yeah, that is that's where we see a lot of the power in because now you are training for a fraction of the price um, and injecting your knowledge in. And it's becoming, you know, you're getting in the output is this great 11 billion parameter. It's actually very similar to 
uh, Upstage, Upstage, they released Solar, 10.7 mm -hmm. billion. They did yeah. a very similar thing, except they trained over the entire model, so it wasn't efficient. But yeah, I, I, it, you can kind of get the gist of it. All right. Yeah, that, that, that looks fun. That looks fun. Yeah. Uh, that's something, you know, uh, we should try as well. So I guess the what's the best place to start? Just go to the Merch Kit repo, uh, read the docs, and, and run the examples and take it from there? Yeah, so go to Merge Kit Repo, right? Um, you can easily just utilize the I'll put the, I'll put all the links things. in the video description. Yeah. Also, we have a Hugging Face space. So we created a Hugging Face with Hugging yes. uh, space with Hugging Face with Julie and Shimon, right? We built the uh, the Merge Kit UI. Um, so that is a Hugging Face space. So you can link to that as well, which is sure. if you don't want to interact with Merge Kit via code, it's literally the code underneath Merge Kit in a, in a Hugging Face space. Right. Um, and then we created another hugging face space for auto generating your config file. Um, so this is all base merging, not evolutionary model merging. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so those are the easiest ways to get started. Um, come June 21st, we are launching our hosted SAS, which will allow you to log into RC and merge. We're going to you know, have a generous free tier for base merges. So you can just go to town on that. Um, right. That's and good. Then, yes. And then evolutionary model merging will be in our product as well. So you know, we found out the community is really excited about evolution model merging, but they just don't want to pay for the GPUs. So we will provide the GPUs and we will allow the community to go nuts on evolutionary model merging as well, which will be in our June 21st launch. All right. Uh, well, that's all super exciting. So please keep an eye, you know, everybody on, on RC and, and Merge Kit, uh, because it looks like they're building something really nice and there's a, there's a lot more coming. I mean, you just got started, right? So... Um, these are just uh, the first few steps. Uh, we're almost at time, so um, any any last thing you want to you want to add about RC, about uh, you know some advice for uh, for developers out there, um, you know anything goes. Yeah, I mean, I'd just say uh, yeah, obviously stay tuned for our cloud offering. We're launching that on June twenty first. Um, that'll be you know essentially you know continual pre trading and model merging as a service. Um, you know, definitely sign up. You can join the waitlist now. Uh, so feel free to join the waitlist. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean, uh, please, uh, you know, go play with Mer play with Merge Kit. Play with Merge Kit. I mean, I find that a lot of people don't see the true power in model merging like I do because they see it as you going out and grabbing two models from the community and merging them together. Mm -hmm. Because and that does make them better. That that yeah. absolutely makes that that model better. But they're kind of closed minded in that thought of because you have to factor in the ability to train your own model and then do a merge, right? It's not just merging, it's training your own model and then doing a merging. And we all know the appetite for training, right? Absolutely. Like look how many fine tuning training platforms that exist today, right? Like there's, there's a huge appetite for companies that want to own, train and own their own model, right? Now, if you pair that with model merging, then you start to see the true power of what model merging can become. Um, so I encourage you to, to to kind of picture it in that world, as opposed to just saying, you know, merge, you know, this great chat model with this great model that was trained on DPO to game the Hugging Face leaderboard. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Let's let's st stop gaming the leaderboard. Start building useful stuff. Okay, I think that's a great conclusion. Yeah. Mark, it's a pleasure. Thank you so much for taking the time. Uh, and uh, you know, I would encourage everybody to keep an eye on on the company and on Merch Kit because it looks like uh, you have a whole lot of interesting stuff in store, okay? Thanks everybody for joining us. I hope you enjoy the conversation and uh, I'll see you soon with more. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye, Mark.